So which is harder, Tanya, uh, Naomi from Wolf of Wall Street, or um, Harley Quinn, which is the harder of three? Uh, Tanya. Tanya. Okay. Yeah, because the accent has subtleties to it, and it was an accent that I wasn't familiar with, and it has, in some ways, a bit of like some vowels and kind of like a Midwest sort of sound, but then some some others others are more like a Southern kind of sound. So it was entirely bizarre to me, and and yeah, and obviously since she's a real life person, to try and get that as spot on as possible. Did the she lower approve register. of I mean, the accent? I haven't asked specifically if she approved of the accent. I'll have to ask her. I think so, she's happy, I don't know. All right, so learning the accent or the figure skating, which was harder? Ooh, both were mechanical, you know, hurdles to come over, uh, to, to overcome. So honestly, it just takes time. Both, both took a long time. Right. Yeah, the ice skating was really hard. All right, ice so. skating was definitely more painful. Okay, <laughs> painful on the ice skating. <laughs> yeah. Which between the two, as far as more difficult, between the fact that you were doing producing or double duty as an actor? Like, I mean, I love both, and both are very difficult to do. I really enjoy doing both at the same time, actually. They, they do go hand in hand. When, when I'm delving into the acting side of things, I can kind of flag things that are gonna be production issues before they come up. Uh, so that was helpful. And likewise, producing and being involved in the script development, you know, the small amount that we needed to do, because honestly, the script was so brilliant, as is, um, kind of helped me start delving into the character long before I normally would as an actor. So uh, doing them both simultaneously helped one another. I'm glad you say that too, because obviously you're producing this, you have other things that are coming out, one of which is maybe a future Harley Quinn project that you're also producing as well, correct? Yeah. So what would you want to see as a producer? Like she, I heard you say you wanted to see her have more chance to have more women in the DC universe. So which female DC characters would you like to see her come into? I mean, you have a say in it, kind of. I, I do have a say in it. Uh, uh, I definitely can't say, this is fantasy. but uh, but but she she Harley operates well in a group. I always felt uh, she does in the comic books, and I think she is like a girl's girl. And in real life, I mean, I I have a gang of girlfriends in London, my gang of girlfriends in Australia, my American girlfriends. Like we always roll in a gang, and um, I kind of thought she would too. All right, well, we won't say it's for Holly Quinn or anything like that, but maybe a female actress that you would like to work with that you could maybe, you know, put, put yeah, in your neck. So many. I mean, I recently got to work with Saoirse in Mary Queen of Scots, and that I loved. I, I want to do something with just a whole girl gang. I mean, there's a million actresses that I adore. Um, I don't know why this name, but Jul Julianne Moore I really want to work with, Tilda Swinton I really want to work with, Kate Blanchett is my idol. Um, and then like there's a ton of amazing, amazing younger actresses. I recently did this event and like Tessa Thompson was there and Riley Keough and like so many these like wicked young actresses that we all started chatting and I was like, can we just do something together, please? It I mean, be... I heard some Marvel names in there so I'm just gonna go ahead and like <laughs> take, take a deep breath and hope that's where it yeah. goes. So I feel like I, Tanya is basically the story behind the headline and it's about, you know, this bad headline that everyone remembers but there's a person behind it that had a real story and you live in the public eye and I know it's you know, challenging I'm sure but what's the funniest thing you read about yourself where you just died laughing because you're like they just made this up oh I mean that happens a lot but particularly at the beginning everyone seemed sh like they refused to believe that I was the age I, I was I, I remember seeing <laughs> online like people because they you know when they read our article and I guess it was around Wolf of Wall Street time so I was 22 at the time and they're like 22 year old Australian actress and every comment blows below was like, she, she's not 22, this is the most ridiculous thing, all these actresses lie about their age. I was like, how in this day and age could I possibly lie about my age? Like, the you internet. can check people, like on the internet, people's Facebook things, like pictures of me in high school, like you just simply can't. But I mean, everyone was like, she's 35 for sure, at least 35. I was like, wow. <laughs> Pictures. Yeah, yeah, they were just irate that someone, that I could dare pretend to be 22. <laughs> They're just jelly, like don't, don't, don't even, cause yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I, I don't think that. I think you look gorgeous and Thank obviously you. you're Yeah, excited. someone actually used the word haggard, she's haggard. I was like, wow. Wow. God, do I look 35? No. I think no. stay out of the sun. <laughs> no, you're great. <laughs>
<laughs> You're great. Um, last question real quick. So um, you haven't talked to Tanya since it came out at all? Just or? via text message. Just via text message. Yeah. So what was the Tanya? Which What was her tagline, if you have one? Um, we, we just kind of text each other every so often, just like, happy Thanksgiving, and how's your family, and things like that. So um, it's, Did she give you a review of the film yet, though, at least? She didn't. We haven't spoken. I mean, she said in general, like, thank you for telling my side of the story. Um, and her husband, too, reached out and said thank you for telling her side of the story and handling everything so respectfully. So that I appreciated. I wanted to ask you, you didn't get to speak with your counterpart like before filming got started. You had to base your entire character off of a video. So first of all, tell us about the video and then how you base your character. Yeah, um, I kind of felt um, the onus was off me when I realized I, I wasn't gonna, we didn't know where Lavana Harding was. No one knew where she was. Tanya didn't know she was alive or dead, nor did she care, um, FYI. Um, so, so I thought, well, I gotta go with what I got. And what I got was a pretty brilliant script written by Stephen Rogers, who's a friend of mine, who wrote this part for me. Uh, which was, uh, you know, first of all, when you see it, you go, really? He thought of you for this part? But um, I think he knew that I would, I would find, I would take on the challenge of trying to find the humanity in this, in this really on the page and, and from, according to Tanya and to Jeff Galuli, just horrible woman. Um, and I had to, to find what, where her pain was, where her suffering, her, her humanity was. So that was the, my trick. And then I had um, my challenge and, and trick too, kind of. Um, but there was the, the, the documentary 30 for 30, there was um, footage uh, of Lavana and then um, a documentary that a, a film student made about Tani when she was 15 years old and she interviewed Lavana Harding and those interviews were fascinating. And not only that, when I first read the script and I saw what I was supposed to be wearing, a, bir a bird and a full, and it was a very specific look and I was like, Stephen, how come you decided that Lavana was gonna, because it sounded too crazy to be true and then I saw the interview and it's exactly what she wore in the interview. To a T, the bowl haircut, the glasses, the bird, the fur coat, everything, it was too good to be true. I was like, this is fascinating. I love, I love this woman. I cannot wait to get into this and, and you know, the whole hair and makeup uh, process took three hours for me to get in that look and then I felt totally liberated by that look. You were Not, transformed. It was pretty cool to <laughs> yeah. be that transformed and it was it was fantastic for me as an actress just to get to concentrate on the telling my side of the story and letting all of this stuff I didn't have to worry about that they the hair and makeup production design <laughs> costume design was brilliant on this movie so I mean they and the little bird did most of the work. <laughs> you did a pretty good job yourself. I mean, let's be honest, there's a lot of great conversation about your role, I need be, because it was like, I didn't believe I was watching you. I was like, CJ Craig disappeared and there's this other lady like sitting across on the screen, but I, I loved bet. it. I loved every minute of it. The other thing I was gonna ask you, if yeah. you could have talked to her though, if you could have talked to Liana, what would you have asked her? Because, you know, I'm sure you had questions. Oh uh, yeah, I would have asked Liana a lot of questions. I would have asked her, I would have really been wanting to find out where she came from what her, what, I would ask her to tell me about her mother and father and did she have brothers and sisters and what was her life growing up like, who were her first four husbands, why did she get married so often, tell me about all your marriages, tell me about, I just would have just been like a little detective asking her questions and, and I don't know if I would have felt comfortable asking her all those questions because you're your toy, you know, I don't, I don't know. It would have been interesting. I wish I'd had the opportunity to, but I didn't, so I'll never know, I guess. Maybe if there's an I, Tanya too, or I, Lavana. <laughs> Maybe she comes out and just like, here I am, this is exactly, exactly. what happened. I know, um, it would be, I would have liked to have found out. So I made up my own story for her that helped me as an actress that informed my um, every scene and just really getting behind what she wanted. And, and the stakes are high for Lavana. She wants a lot, she wants, she feels she's owed a lot and has been overlooked by life and passed by and, and, and just dealt a shitty hand. And, oh, can I say that? Probably you not. can say whatever okay, you want. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And she's owed, and so she sees an opportunity with her daughter to get her out of her, you know, get them both out of this, you know, trailer park um, uh, life. And, and, um, and Lana's a pretty smart woman, too, in all the interviews. I was really impressed by how um, her, Verbal skills were incredibly, she's a very smart woman. So 
And, and she I think made a champion. Made a know? champion, and she was rightfully um, angry about the way that her daughter was treated in the figure skating world. The fact is, she was talented, and no one was better than her. And so that should have spoken for itself, her talent. That should have reflected in the scores. But it didn't, because the figure skating world didn't embrace Tanya Harding, because she didn't fit into the regular mold of who the, the figure skater was. The perfect figure skater wore, you know, fur coats and had per pearl necklaces and had a, was married and had, chi you know, not, well, not necessarily children, but they, they they wanted a, they had a different, definite they image. A they yeah. wanted a princess, yeah. and Tanya was not a princess. She was rebellious, and and she's a champion, and she's incredible what she accomplished. And no one can take away that accomplishment, that the fact that she did the triple axel. I yeah. still think there are only six women in the world who have done it. So yeah, and I know it was hard maybe trying to get someone to find like yeah. when they get the stump duddle. But I'm yeah. glad you brought up Tanya because she's the one I wanted to talk about too. Because I feel like you're right. She was scrappy. She yeah. you know had this sort of never say die mentality about yeah. it. Even though the figure skating world didn't want her to succeed, yeah. she kind of got that I think from her mother a little yeah. bit. What would be your like I Tanya moment? What was that moment where you were like, all right, I'm gonna do this even when people tell me I can or I won't? Well, mine was definitely had to do with my height and on um, people saying you're too you're too tall to act. You're too tall to you're you're not you know you you don't have enough edge. You know I think someone told me that when I was, was funnily enough I was talking about the world of figure skating an edge, but someone actually said you don't have any edge. You're you're not going to be an actor. You know all the people who say you can't do something made me angry and, and I definitely am motivated by that same kind of thing that Tanya was. I mean, that when she was angry, she did her best and sometimes that's for me too. I'm like, oh yeah, you're gonna tell me I can't? And I had, a, I had to face that my entire career. You know, I did my career didn't start till I was 38. So um, there was a lot of that I had and a lot of that boiling up in me and, and anger and like, why can't I? I know I'm tall, but I can still act and, and, and men are tall too, so why can't I? And I, oh, that always made me so mad when I was in a scene with a guy like, can we get, take her out of a, her heels? And I'm like, well, he's tall. Why, why, why can't I be tall? Yeah. Like, what the hell is wrong? As a yeah. tall lady, you've been my champion, oh, like I said, for oh, all of it. I love, I love like You and Grindel and Christy are like on my I love like, that. Love it. Your character, Jeff Galuli, his name became synonymous with kind of messing people over, So, <laughs> which is awful, and I know it wasn't great. But if somebody could have a name for standing, what would be your synonym? Standing? Yeah, like if somebody stand to somebody. I don't know. I'm trying to make this into a verb, but it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> like if I stand for someone. Well, some of the really great fans that I have uh, consider themselves stands. <laughs> so that's... Uh, that's pretty, that's, that's, I don't know, that's pretty epic for me, I guess. Yeah, no, that's the, what I was trying to get to is like there's an internet slang, basically. It's like if you're an uber fan of someone, you say you stand for them, like Eminem song, Stand. Oh, nice. That, that's yeah. cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah, so like I was just wondering. Anytime I can be in the same sentence with Eminem <laughs> is an okay situation for me. That's good. No, but this film is about obviously Tanya Harding and Jeff Galuli and all of the things that happened around the incident. If you ever been part of a bad headline, what would you say was the funniest or weirdest one? Like, if you were associated with a bad headline, what was it? I mean, that's a terrible question. <laughs> no, you're, you're asking me if I were to be a part of a bad headline. No, no, what no. I'm asking, have you ever read of? a bad uh, headline? No bad headline. No bad headline no bad um, that was completely fake. Like, I should say fictitious. I would be like, I uh, the worst headline I would want to be, you know, the, the guy who ate, like, too much ice cream or something and oh, then, like, okay. tripped over a child and, I don't know. You never Googled like, yourself I, and found something awful where you're like, who made this up? Listen, I, I don't, I, I don't Google myself because <laughs> I, I, I try to get, I, I, you know, get through the day without anxiety, <laughs> so I, uh, it's not, like, on the top priorities for me. Okay, I wouldn't Google myself either if I had that many people Well, but I'll it. be Googling you after this. <laughs> so <laughs> Please that, do. That You'll find very fun things about Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I guess you did get to sit down with Jeff and talk to him about the character and the portrayal. What did he say when you sat down with him? I heard he was a little, at first, apprehensive. Yeah, well, he, you know, he was, uh, and I think rightfully so, really sort of weirded out as to why we were making a movie about this. Um, I don't think he really wants to revisit the situation, but he was very open to talk about it which was interesting because he, there was never really an account of him talking about it before. And the version in the movie that you're getting is the first time you're hearing this story. I mean, it's the first time you heard him, but you spent a lot of time with his voice, right? Before this to try and get that sort of... Yeah, movie. well, I had I had the interview that um, on audio that Steven Rogers, you know, did with him, and I would just listen to that all the time. 
was that is that harder because I feel like Margot going from Australian to try and do something completely different it's easier a little bit because it's completely different was it harder slipping in and out of your own natural one yeah it is it is harder because you're you feel like you're um, you know you feel like you're imitating you feel like you're mimicking somebody you know and it feels fake and it's like but you have to keep going through the process and at some point it just kind of becomes natural and it was when I went to see him in Portland the biggest um, the biggest test was I just started going around trying to just talk like that to strangers and see if they were looking at me weird yeah and I had a new you know I had an uber driver and I was like talking like that the entire time and then that and then that I, I felt like I was like oh maybe I can do this thing <laughs> I don't know well I know you said you read the script and that's kind of what made you want to get a part of it like right. so what about it when you first read it that you were like okay I've got to be because I heard in your interview at TIFF you said the script made it for me. The fact that it was Tanya Harding was just kind of a secondary factor. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know that, you know, I remembered aspects about it, but I wasn't aware when I read the script. And so it, it, the script really made me curious. And being curious is like number one for me. If I'm, if I'm curious, if I'm thinking about it afterwards, if I'm quoting the lines, if I'm, you know, then, then that's a good sign I should be doing something uh, about it. And then it was also kind of scary because um, I'd never played a real person before and 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 certainly I don't think people ever look at me and they want to cast me in a role like that so that kind of um, challenge in a way just was really appealing to me. That's awesome. Well you've had a busy year and you're definitely doing a lot of projects but I really want to talk about this soldier that everyone's really interested about. The one soldier. Yeah, Jack Benjamin from Kings. Jack <laughs> Benjamin from Kings. I'm still mad that they canceled that, by the way. Well, Just listen, I mean, that you. was like uh, maybe five years too early. If that would have come out... On in, HBO two years later? Yeah, it could have. It could have. We might still... I might even be in this film. Just, Just saying. Jack Benjamin for life. I'm just saying, I'm still heartbroken. But no, of course, I'm talking about Winter Soldier. Uh, did you get any good text calls the day the trailer dropped from folks that saw the trailer and went nuts? Um, no, just a lot of a lot of fans, you know, reached out, which is always amazing, you know, hearing from them. Um, and uh, that was very humbling, for sure, you know. So what was your favorite moment from the trailer, since I know you're not going to tell me anything about the film? <laughs> that I even know about. Um, <laughs> my favorite moment of the trailer is that I'm actually in it because I, I I didn't think I was gonna make it with so many characters, um, and it everything is my favorite thing. I, I I never got to see a script. I never got to see any footage from the movie. You know, so I never saw Josh Brolin. I never saw any of these guys working. So. Actually seeing the trailer was me also understanding what the movie's about. <laughs> I mean, I always knew, you know, what I was doing in it, um, as it, like, you know, the Winter Soldier, but, but the epic that, you know, that now it was really becoming real for me.